William Crawley with Talkback on BBC Radio Ulster. Welcome back, everybody. You may have been watching the MPs yesterday being sworn into Parliament. You can watch them today as well, probably tomorrow too. There are 650 of them, so it takes a while for them to get through this parliamentary ritual of pledging allegiance, taking an oath or making an affirmation. They have to say, if they're taking the, the oath... I swear by Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles, his heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. Or they can use a non-religious affirmation. Not everybody's happy about this ritual, by the way, whether or not it even involves um, a reference to God. You may remember the late Tony Benn, the father of our current Secretary of State, Hillary Benn, used to deliberately cross his fingers from time to time while he took the oath. Yesterday, Jeremy Corbyn was heard complaining that it was all a load of nonsense. And the SDLP MP Colin Eastwood, the leader of the SDLP, was similarly unimpressed. This is what he said. I'll read out this empty formula in order to uh, represent my constituents, but it's under protest. I do solemnly, sincerely and truly declare and affirm that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles, his heirs and successors according to law, my true allegiance is to the people of Derry and the people of Ireland. Let's talk to our other guests, uh, the journalist and author Malachy O'Doherty, Claire Hanna, the SDLP MP, who yesterday spoke in Irish first, framing the words that she was about to use, then took the oath, or rather the affirmation, in English. Um, Andrew Eborn is also with us, lawyer and broadcaster. Welcome, Andrew. Andrew, you think the oath is important, that we should keep it? I, I think it's glorious, and I, I, I love the fact that Tony Benn used to cross his fingers, but but you're right, just to put this into context... Well, there's another example cannot... of performative <laughs> insincerity around an oath. Oh, well, I, I think that's right, and as a lawyer, if I was going to play devil's advocate, I would turn around and say, well, we should fine all these people. Let's get this 500 quid and give it all to the doctors and nurses. <laughs> That'll help us. Um, but I, I think Well, since you are a lawyer, if I were to stand up in court, and um, before I took the oath, say yes. everything I'm about to say, I don't believe and cross my fingers. Would that oath be accepted by a judge? I would absolutely argue that it wouldn't. And I think there we should instead. So you have to turn around and say, look, it, the, the whole thing about this is, and this is the, the law, is that they cannot take their seat, speak in debates, vote or receive a salary until taking the oath or affirmation. They, mm. They've changed the wording, you don't have to believe in God and so on and so forth. Right. But they turn around, they get 500 quid fine, and they have the, their seat declared vacant as if it were dead. Ed, that's the important yeah. thing. Forget the 500 quid. They could lose their seats. So if, if somebody wants to turn around and say, well, actually, we to avoid Starmageddon, see all the people who are mocking the oath and we can get them replaced. How does that sound? I, I saw one Labour MP, I think it was a Labour MP yesterday, um, who, who went up to the clerk and they said, um, you know, which... which sacred text would you like and he, he said I'm C of E and, and then she said yes but which sacred text would you like and, and he replied oh I don't mind really <laughs> he, he was quite happy to do the Tanakh or the, or the Quran depending yes. on what you have with him. Claire uh, how did it feel for you going through this ritual well, it's the second time I've done it, for what it's worth. I, I do think it's outdated. I, I wrote to the speaker and actually had a meeting with him during the last term and his, and his legal advisor about it. And the, the point I made was that the first words I said as a member of parliament weren't true for me. And as somebody who, who strongly subscribes to the Nolan principles of integrity and so on in public life, I didn't think that was a very, uh, a very good start. And I suppose I'm also... Um, firmly attached to the Good Friday Agreement, which which gives equal legitimacy to different traditions here, including those of us who don't, who, who aren't British. Um, and as I say, I, I fully respect those members and my many constituents and indeed voters um, who who do and would pledge allegiance. But I, but I think it's outdated. But it isn't something that I would let uh, stop me serve uh, the people I'm elected uh, for in, in in all of the ways that I can. And I think, I mean, if you search my name on Twitter, you'll see the usual bootlicker, soup ticker, ticker, West Brent <laughs> plastic patty. And, and I'll be honest, it fuels me because it, it's very clear to me that there are people who have no interest in a reconciled New Ireland. They just want a different form of supremacy. And it just reminds me um, that the, the, I suppose the, the political values and the political mission that I'm part of um, are as valid as they ever were. 
So, Maliki, there, there, you can have a number of debates here. Obviously, you can have a debate about whether you should be required to take an oath of allegiance to the monarch. Mm -hmm. um, there's a wider debate, too, about why you would need to take any oath at all. For example, Quakers don't take oaths, and they had to change the law in the past to allow Quaker MPs. Uh, I saw Ga Gavin Robinson, who takes the, the New Testament seriously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Matthew's Gospel says, let your yes be yes, let your no be no, and discourages people taking unnecessary oaths. Mm -hmm. So he did the affirmation whilst holding the King James. Isn't that interesting? It's an yeah, interesting yeah, mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're Christian yeah, brethren from yeah. a brethren, you won't be taking the oath yeah. either. There's lots of different approaches. To, why an oath at all, of any kind? Well, I mean, I suppose it's an expression of commitment, and that's what it's meant to when be. Can you just and sign in and say, as of this yeah, date, yeah, I'm not an MP? Absolutely, that would be, the, that would be the, the proper way to do it. And as you say as well, there are, as Claire mentioned, the Nolan principles. I mean, the very first thing that she has to do on her first day is, is, is breach them, you know. Our very clearly, first words. Parliament, <laughs> clearly, Parliament does not actually believe in this. I mean, when Claire stands up and says, I don't really mean this, and Colm calls it an empty formula, the Speaker could intervene at that point and say, well, hang on a minute, you know, you are required to take an oath and if you, and we expect you to do it with sincerity. Oh, no, the law doesn't know? say you have to take sincer sincerity. <laughs> <laughs> well, I that. think the clues in the word oath, you know. Oh, it says I you have the to the use these the words. words. Almighty God. The law literally says you have to use these words. It yeah, doesn't, yeah, it doesn't comment it, yeah. on your motivation. Well, then it's a, of a, it's of a type with other little rituals around Parliament, like having to have the mason position when, mm. when Parliament's in session, or having Black Rod beating the door before, and or, you know, the, the King's speech yeah. and so on. So so in that sense, it's a, it's it's a kind of tokenism. And tokenism should not be of such that somebody's political career depends on them observing it. This is too lightly done. It is too light in the meaning mm -hmm. that it carries. Therefore, it really is quite ridiculous and would be better dispensed with. We used to have more oaths. We used to have an oath of supremacy. We have now an oath of allegiance. We now have an affirmation. You can do it in different languages. Mm -hmm. It has changed over the year the years, Andrew. But we now have a situation where it's perfectly legitimate, is it not, for a member of the British Parliament to be a Republican. And I don't just mean an Irish Republican. I mean, I mean a small R Republican. But we require them by law to pretend they're not in order to become an MP. Absolutely. And and that's the whole point, because it goes back, to, as you, your point. earlier guest pointed out, the Promissory Oaths Act of 1868, which basically put out the wording of the oath, and that's where it comes from. And the form and manner of giving the oath are set out in the Oaths Act of uh, 1978. But I go back to my general point at the very beginning, is that if people don't do the oath, and I would say that you have to do it with meaning, so we should start enforcing this, not only is it a 500 quid fine, but their seat is declared vacant. And I think if we would sort of turn around on that sort of basis, uh, people take it far more more seriously, but constitutionally, as we say, it goes all. You would have by-elections for all those Sinn Fein. Oh, I, I, I think that's the law. You have to turn. No, that's not the law. That's the law you're proposing. No, no, this the is law the law. Doesn't, the doesn't it doesn't that the current law doesn't require by-elections. Well, no, the current law, the current says law has been oath, changed yes. so that they don't get salaries, but they do get expenses. Well, no, they, they turn around. So you have to work on this sort of basis that if they don't take the oath, which is what it says at the moment, then you could be fined five hundred pounds and have the seat declared vacant. That's the law at the moment. But Parliament is able. Hang, hang on, as I, we did, said I did check that oath act. Uh, it, what it says is you get fined if you speak in Parliament without having taken the oath. They right, would they make a much more effective protest if they went into Parliament. Yes. And then when invited... That's a different the question. That's an argument to... about abstentionism. Well, there, there, yeah. there, there are a few things. Let me, let me clarify this for you. They cannot take their seat, speak in debates, yes. vote or receive a salary until the oath or affirmation. That, that's the word. That's right. And, and Shane Tang complies with all of that. 500 quid, that's 500 right. quid, or declare the seat vacant. That's the thing people forget. So we, if you wanted to enforce it, that's what you do. But as you rightly say, as you at, at the beginning of the show, UK Parliament could change it, it if could. they wanted to. Um, question is whether it should. Places. Would what? the king have to sign the act changing it? Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> as indeed he would if they abolished yeah. it. Uh, yeah. uh, so, exactly. <laughs> what, so what, you've got to look at that principle. Jump in, Claire. Yeah, in, in, in my, as I say, I, I met, I met um, the speaker and the speaker's legal advisor and, and made an alternative proposal that was around, um, I suppose, a pledge of service to your constituents and upholding uh, parliamentary standards. Yes. And, and he didn't, uh, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't in opposition. It's fair to say, I don't think it's at the top of his agenda. <laughs> we were meeting at the tail end, at the tail end of, uh, of, of COVID uh, as well. It is worth saying, though, um, that when uh, the Queen died, uh, 
last year, the year before, um, and the oath was retaken. The Speaker did proactively contact uh, me and some other members and said, you can take the oath again or not take the oath. You know, they, they, they allowed an element of uh, discretion there within uh, within the mandate. But a pledge of, of service. And I mean, there are so many more important things for Parliament um, to focus on in terms of... Uh, we had lots of examples of people saying things that simply weren't true um, throughout the parliamentary uh, term. So I think I think it is possible. There are, and I think this is the case for Sinn Féin, I think it's, um, it's the oath, although I understand it's because they don't have the cast and vote and because it's in England and so on. So I don't think if the oath was reformed, as your, as your scholar outlined, that was on yeah. offer, and, and I don't think uh, that was the only barrier. But a pledge um, to, to service uh, and to truth, and with the oath there for those who believe mm. in it. But I think afterwards someone will do a piece of analysis. I know in the short while... Um, that I was in the queue, and I have to confess, I was due to do my oath today. Um, and I was uh, technically, you're not uh, Irish. Isn't one of the languages that you can uh, that's listed that you can do. Um, I was going to, but I'll, I'll my, my A level Irish was quite a few years you can, ago. You can so do I'm Irish been, once you've done English. I, you can do Irish yeah. after was, you've done it in English. As, as I was She's in, not up to scratch. In, She's well, exactly. No, no, you could you could have done Irish if you can do Punjabi. You can do Irish. Yeah. But Claire, yeah. tell me, how I, would I what can, would what would a breach of allegiance be? I could survive for a few weeks um, in the Gale Club, but I can't, uh, I can't do legal language as Gale Club with an There you go, uh, yeah. I'm wondering what I, a breach of a lot of allegiance would be. Can I play devil's advocate here? Hello. <laughs> Hello, Andrew, go ahead. Yes, be, can, be can the I, devil. Let me play devil's advocate here. Uh, one of the things that Keir Starmer emphasised in his opening speech was about trust, and trust in politicians is at an all-time low. And I always say that trust comes in on foot but leaves on horseback. And if the first thing that every politician does, they come in and they sort of mock the oath, which is a compulsory thing under law, as we've established, and they cross their fingers and say, we don't really believe it. How's well, that going to restore trust? Well, at least Claire is, I, I, least Claire is sincerely declaring her insincerity. Yeah. <laughs> and do you, do, you, do you accept that part of, part of our constitution is the Good Friday Agreement, which esteems equally different political traditions and mm. it seems equally those of us who are Irish and those of us who are British. And yes. you'll understand that um, whatever commitment I have to all parts of that, including Strand 3, whatever deep affection I have for uh, for Britain and for British people in my constituency and, and, and people in Britain, I'm not a monarchist. Um, so you, you can you can play devil's advocate, uh, but you are seeking to impose <laughs> an identity. And not just, as it not is. just yeah. an identity, right. a, 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 a viewpoint. So I think right. to say that uh, truth, people... People aren't truthful because they don't pledge of course. allegiance to and the royal family. As, as the UK and as UK law has changed over the years, yeah. this oath has changed over the years. There was That's a right. point where Catholics wouldn't be able to take the oath. That was changed. There was a point where Jewish people could not do the oath. The affirmation was introduced not to make space for humanists and atheists. It was introduced to make space for Catholics. Remember that. We have a very complex history behind all of this. Malachi, I'm wondering, looking at the words of this oath, if you could actually sincerely take these words if you were a Republican, that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles, his heirs and successors according to law. According Let, to law. According to law. Oh, Let me give that's you my, interesting. my... Could I not Could I not swear allegiance to the King of Saudi Arabia as, to the extent as required by British law? Allegiance? To the extent as required by British law, which is not at all... What is it? I think you've got to parse what those words mean. What does yes, it mean exactly. to pledge allegiance to the king and his successors according to law? Maybe it simply means, Claire, that you say, you know, I, I, want, a, I want a republic, I don't want a king, but we do have a king according to our current constitution, and I will, I will follow the rules of the current constitution. Maybe it just means that, Claire, in which case you could meaningfully say these words. Well, that's actually, that's, that's the legal advice that I got. You were saying uh, one sentence kind of uh, framed by that clause according to law. But look, I'm not going to dance on the head of a pen and pretend <laughs> I, didn't, uh, I didn't say it because I, I'll, I'll jump through lots of hoops to serve the many people that voted for me who have uh, needs to be represented in, in Parliament. I'm not going to, there's lots of administrative uh, hurdles that we have to pass to do important things, and that was one of them. So yes, you could argue that I said all those words, including the phrase "according to law." But but as I say, I'm not I'm not ashamed of it. Um, and do those and, words and bind say, you, Claire? 
do those words bind you? I mean, for instance, what would be a breach of your pledge? Would insulting the king be a ble breach no. of your pledge? Is there anything in law that would be a breach of your pledge? No. Because if there isn't, then it doesn't I, mean I a thing. No, I, I guess. I guess it's like people who either get married in a church who aren't religious or who maybe become a godparent. You know, I don't think there's a, you know, a, a outside of, outside of, I suppose, you know, in the next life, <laughs> I don't know that there's a consequence. Um, yeah, it, it, it's to, interesting, to, to isn't it? Until death, I, I still part, uh, unless I change my mind. You're working yeah. on that sort of basis. But but you do make an interesting point, because whilst the penalty is not for taking the oath, and I say you could lose your seat as a result of it, there doesn't seem to be a penalty if you're not faithful having taken the oath. Uh, and that's an interesting one, because nobody seems to have enforced that. Uh, but certainly people need to shine a spotlight again on, on what that really means. I but suspect as, as in the explain, 17th yeah. century it meant after the Restoration that you wouldn't take up arms and try to have another yeah. revolution. And clear well, that's where this oath is. That's where it comes from. Also, also as, as was pointed out at the beginning, it's one of the three parts. Is, is You've got the commons, you've got the lords, and yeah. you've got the, the, the monarchy, you've got the king. That's what it is at the moment. And that's really what you're pledging allegiance to, that whole process of enacting laws and, and enforcing them. Just that. Nothing more than that. Not even the man himself, Malachy. <laughs> you can take the actual Charles out of the picture. He's uh, just a placeholder constitutionally. Well, and, and I mean, the other thing is that, uh, that the monarchy itself is becoming broadly more irrelevant within the yeah. population. You'd take a peerage, though, wouldn't you? Hmm? You'd take a peerage in a second, wouldn't you? I would not, absolutely. Lord O'Doherty. Well, uh, oh, <laughs> I kind of O'Doherty. Get the Lord, absolutely. Yeah, yeah he absolutely. would. Absolutely. Uh, Send your money now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much, Andrew Eborn, Claire Hannah, Malachi O'Doherty. Uh, that, and this is my oath, is all that there is from us today.